Okay, guys, we are finance people. We like stocks. We like Bitcoin. And we also like tables. What finance people really like are tables. Tables look like this. They look like Excel spreadsheets. And we need to add a table to our app in order to see all of our data. But we run into a problem. We run into this problem of trying too hard to be dry. Trying too hard not to be dry, which is repetitive. And really what we need to do is we need to find a happy medium between dry and just hard coding everything. So what I devised is a table that we can reuse. I have created a table that we can reuse in different places throughout our app because that is what React wants. React is built upon this philosophy of reusable component in this table that we are about to make is going to look very similar to an excel spreadsheet the title is going to be like the last name the sales the country and the value you guessed it it's going to be the actual values that we put within our table but what's this config thing that we're going to see so what we're going to do is we are going to actually create our table component then what we're going to do is we're going to pass what's called a config object with the label and the cell. So we can have a label for our quote unquote Excel spreadsheet. So this would be our label would be our last name and the actual cell. What's going to happen is it's going to have a function so that whenever something is passed into one of our actual individual data cells right here, value, we can provide some type of function or some type of value that can iterate on it. And we can iterate and do something to each part of our actual cells. Now that is promising a lot and that is kind of confusing, but the best way to kind of understand this is just to go ahead, jump with me over into the code and let's build this. So first and foremost, let's go ahead and let's create another page called design guide. And I think that this would be a very great thing for you to have on your actual react project because very, very few people will add an actual design guide to their app. Every single large company has what's called a design guide and adding a design guide to, to your actual app will express volumes to the employer about how seriously you take front-end development. And being a back-end developer myself, I actually love front-end. Even though I am by trade a actual back-end developer, I love front-end development just as I like back-end. So we need to create this. So hence, we need to create this design page. Just kidding. Okay, so we've got our design page actually figured out. Okay, so what I'm going to do next is we're going to add a uh, pair of brackets just so that we are properly nested. And then I'm going to add an H1 and I'm going to say bin shark design page. And below this, I will just put a quick H2 that explains maybe somebody doesn't know what a design page is, or maybe somebody just found this and I'll just give a brief description that says, this is bin sharks design page. This is where we will house various design aspects of the app. Okay, very simple. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create our table. And the reason that we're putting our table within the design page is because this table is going to be used everywhere and we need to have a centralized place where we can keep the table and kind of have test data with it so that once again people who actually use our app and other people maybe other coworkers, other developers can know what's going on and this design page can kind of be a very simple wiki about various components so we've got our actual design page made now what we need to do is we need to of course create the table and the way that we're going to create the table is you guessed it we're going to create a component and we're going to add table tsx and we'll just go ahead and do the snippet right now and then we'll say table.css and that will be good enough Okay, so now we can actually bring this in and let's go ahead and make sure that our design page is working. Okay, so now what I need to do is I need to actually add the design guide to the actual route path. So I'm going to call this design guide right here. 
going to go call this the design page, design guide. You could call it design page, whatever you want to. If I go into my actual app right here, what you'll see is Finshark design page. This is Finshark's design page. This is where we will house various design aspects of our project. And I'm going to go ahead and get correct this. This is a very bad misspelling that I need to correct. Okay, so because we're housing this inside of a design page and we're not actually pulling various uh, pieces of data into this, what we need to do is we're just going to create some test data into in here just like this and we will add test data to it so that we can actually test our apps. And what I'm going to do is you don't need to actually create the test data. What I'll do is I'll just leave a link and just go into here and just copy all of this test data down here. It's, it's a bunch and it would be uh, very bad to go and actually type all this out. I could not imagine anybody actually going and typing all this out. So what I'm gonna do is just go into here and I'm going to pass, go ahead and copy this and I'm going to copy and paste it into here and make sure that it is working. Okay, so we now have the green light on our table and what we are going to do is we're going to go ahead and bring in our test data. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead, I'm gonna bring in my data and we're going to call this test, I think it's called test income statement data just like this, and this is going to be a test of just all of this data down here. So we've got all of this income statement data in our actual test data right here. And I'm going to make sure that I actually have the right name. I'm not, I'm not so yes, test income data is the actual data that we want, and we are going to pass it up here into our data just like this. Don't need any props, but if you want to, I guess you don't actually have to do this. You could type in company and we're going to change this here in a little bit so you don't actually technically need this but if you want to you can also type it and i'll show you how to type it just like this what's not definitely not the best practice to do this but since we're just uh doing this for test data's sake we can we can we'll be we'll be okay okay so next thing we're going to need to create the config Remember that I said we need to create this config object for our table. What we're going to do is, once again, we're just going to have a nice little test config right here. And we're going to go here and we'll say label and all of our income statements um, are going to need a year. So just for right now, we'll just have uh, the year. And then we'll go down here. We'll say the company. We're going to pass in the company, and this is going to be this render statement that I was talking about, and we'll use this type right here to actually type it, and we'll have an error function here that is going to return just the company, and we'll just say accepted date. We'll put the accepted date right there. That is, uh, that is acceptable for, I guess, an income statement, the accepted date. So we'll go down here, and... Once again, just trying to fill this up with dummy data. We're going to be using this table in many places. So right now it's just a uh, race to fill it up with dummy data so that we can actually use it. And same thing up here, but instead of returning the year, we'll say we'll return the company's cost of revenue. Once again, this is just dummy data, so feel free to pass whatever you want to. And feel free to pass whatever you want to in the future. It's your finance app, not mine. Okay, so cost of revenue. This is going to be our cost of revenue. Since we are creating a table, we're going to individually create functions that are going to create the T head and the T body. We'll create a function for this part. We'll create a function for this part inside of the component. And then within our actual return statement down here, we will bridge them and we will put them together and form an actual table. Once again, it might not make a lot of sense, but it will here in just a second. So we'll say const and we'll call these the rendered rows. So we'll say rendered rows is equal to, and we're going to pass in our data and we've got our data right up here. And in a second, we're going to pass our data into here. So we'll say data will eventually be within our props but it's not in our props just yet, so we can't do that. So right now we're going to have uh, a map and we'll have company data just like this, and we are going to pass it 
a return function. And then here we're going to put our JSX. So we'll have TR and I'm going to say key. And because every company that you pass into it is going to have a CIK, if it's a stock, if it's Bitcoin, if it's a bond, it's not going to have it. But if it's a stock, it will have a CIK. If it doesn't, it's probably not a stock. So we're going to say TD. Otherwise, you would have to pass in UUID, which you could definitely pass in UUID here. But since we have a unique value and we have the CIK right here, and we can pretty much assume that it's going to be unique because a CIK is essentially an ID in the stock market, we don't actually have to pass the key as you would in a more traditional way. So this is going to be class name. So we're going to pass in class name. We'll give this uh, a little bit of padding, uh, white space, no wrap, so that it's not going to wrap around because we don't want a table to actually wrap around like that because that would not be uh, visually appealing. <laughs> and then we're going to go into here. We're going to say uh, font normal. We'll say text gray 900. So we'll say text gray 900. And I think we didn't close this out right here. So go ahead, close that. So what we're going to do is we are going to map over our config. So we're going to go into here. We'll say val. We'll give this any. <clears throat> and then go ahead down here and just go ahead and copy in the TD. So we'll go ahead, copy in the TD just like this. That's looking good. Looks like we do not have any errors. And then we're going to pass in the val.render. So we'll say... Go into here, say val dot render. And the actual value that we're going to pass into this is going to be the map value that we have up top. So go down here. And we are going to pass in the company to each val render just like this. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to do the header. So we'll say rendered headers. And what we're going to do is we're going to map over the configs to and what we are going to do is we're going to map over the configs again. So I'm going to say uh, configs.map. This is going to be a single config, just like this. And then go ahead, type it as any. Go ahead and uh, go down. And what we're going to do is we're going to return, once again, this TH part right here. So the head is going to be the TH as opposed to the body, which is going to be the TD. And we go into here, we go TH. We're gonna give this a class name. We gotta apply a little bit of styling to it or else it's going to look terrible. So say P4, go down here, go text left. So make sure that all of our text to the left, uh, makes it, make the text extra small. Go font medium, uh, text gray. We'll give this 500 uppercase and we'll say tracking wider, just like that. And that is going to finish off our TH. We also have to give this a key as well too. So then the actual TH, will, so we'll say key and we'll go config and we will also give this a uh, label. And that will be a perfectly good key so that we can get our headers out of the way. Okay, so this one is going to be config.label because remember, since we're mapping over the headers, we're mapping over the config, our label is going to be provided Right. So we've gone ahead and done all this work right here. This part is going to be super easy. So we'll say class name is equal to BG uh, white, just like this. So background white. We'll also give it, let's give it a shadow rounded. Uh, we'll make this rounded just to make it look a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. We'll give it some padding, uh, apply a little bit of mobile styling to it. So we'll say P6, we'll say extra large is equual to P dot eight just like that and that looks good so now what we need to do now that we're done so let's go ahead <clears throat> that is going to be our div that wraps around the whole entire thing but we still have yet to create the t head and the t body so what we're going to do is we're going to have t head right here we're going to have m min full. okay so min with divide y so let's say divide y uh divide the rendered headers going to add the t body a t head rendered headers t body is equal to rendered rows in the plural form 
and this is rendered row. So go ahead, add that. Let's go ahead and check this out. I'm gonna go ahead into my design guide. So we got design guide right here. And if you look very, the data looks pretty bad. We're gonna clean up a lot of this data, but we now have a table that we can actually use that in our income statement and every other part of our app and it's reusable. Anyway, enjoyed this. If you did, make sure to smash that like button, smash that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching.